Okay, so we're going to look at the lab book on how to write up a practical. That's the first thing. So, in your lab book, which you need to keep for two years to get the practical endorsement, in the beginning of the book on page four, there's the experimental design. So, I'm going to run through that. <coughs> okay, so initially, you write your aim followed by a prediction. And then these need to link in with the independent variable. and the dependent variable. So we'll look at those first. So the independent variable is the thing that you vary, the factor that you vary. So it could be the temperature of the enzyme suspension. But it needs to be the temperature of something. Following on from the independent variable, you then put in a range. So you say which temperatures you're going to use. And you need to put five values. So for example, 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50. That will hit your range. So I can put a little head in for that as the range. Uh, the dependent variable is the factor that you measure. So we could be measuring the volume of oxygen produced in centimetres cubed. And this needs units. So the volume of oxygen um, collected in a minute, for example, and then units. Okay, so that's the dependent variable. Then we can go back to the aim of the prediction because you need to link in the thing that you're varying with the thing that you're measuring. So the aim of the experiment, and I'll use these two, is to investigate the effect of enzyme temperature on the volume of oxygen produced. And then your prediction gives a direction to the uh, independent variable linked to, sorry, the dependent variable linked to the independent variable. So as the temperature increases, <coughs> there will be more oxygen produced. Now you can extend this to talk about an optimum temperature and then say what happens after the optimum in terms of the oxygen production, that's all fine. But it can be a simple, a simple, simple statement of what you expect to happen. From the independent, the range and the dependent variable, we then go on to control variables. So this is what you may have heard of being called as a fair test, but we don't use that, we talk about the control variables. So it's factors that you're going to keep the same during your practical. This is normally volumes of any solution that you use. It could be concentrations, so of enzyme, of the substrate. Uh, it could be the temperature and it could be the pH. So it could be any of those. They're things you need to think about. But they need units and values. So what do I mean by that? So if you're controlling the temperature, you might say that I'll do all the experiments um, at 30 degrees Celsius. So this is the value and this is the unit. The concentration might be um, a 5% concentration of the substrate. So if it's glucose, for example, a 5% glucose concentration. But we need to say what the 5% is of, and it's 5% of the stock solution. So we're assuming that there's been a dilution done of 100% stock solution. Volumes will probably be in centimetres cubed, which is fine. Um, but it could, be, it could be something else. It depends what you're measuring. And pH, there's no unit. So I'd use a pH buffer um, of pH 7. So I'll leave the aim of prediction on, so we'll know what I'm doing. From the control variables, then we talk about... Um, reliability and you may have heard this spoke about in different ways reliability, repeatability, replicability they're all the same thing if something's reliable it happens in the same way every time so the more times you test it 
and the more times you come up with the same reading, the more reliable it is. So what we say is that we repeat the experiment three times, and that's the first thing. Then we calculate a mean. So our three readings, so we have the readings one, two, and three. Then we've got a spread. So if, we, if we've calculated, oh, sorry, collected oxygen for a minute and we did it three times, in the first minute we got one centimetres cubed, in, the, sec in the, the second time we did it, in a minute we got two centimetres cubed, and the third time we did it, in the minute we got three centimetres cubed, we'll be looking at those results going, hmm, well, is it one or is it three? So we take a mean, and the mean of that would be two, and we can see that there's a deviation from the mean, so it could be slightly lower or slightly above. And what we're looking at in reliability is how different the repeat values are from the mean. So we calculate a mean, and the point of doing this is it's going to increase the reliability of the results. So, I would say that these are pretty reliable. What if I did the same experiment and I got one, 12 and 7. The values are not very close together. So the mean is going to be somewhere around 6 or 7. So looking at the mean, the spread of the results is quite large. So we would say that these aren't that reliable. But we go on to that in the results section. So this is the reason that we look at reliability.